Next up, let's create a user. Now it's important to note the steps that we've been taking when we want to add a new section to our site. We have been one, creating the component, two, registering it with app module, three, adding it to the routing, and four, adding a corresponding method in our service. Now those are the order I like to kind of go in. Sometimes I like to do the app module and app routing first since they're the easiest steps. The order doesn't really matter too much, it's what's best in your mind for how the flow of your application works. To show off the other way, let's start an app module. We're going to go in here, import from the users, user create, and we haven't created this folder yet in our users folder. We'll do that after this user create user create dot component and we'll have the user create component copy that down here paste that in alright app module is done notice that our error is here since we can't find that component we haven't created it yet app routing we will do the same let's go back to app module and copy that under app routing paste that in and uncomment out the last route that we needed Okay, app module and app routing are done. Let's go on to creating the component and adding it to the service. Under users, we'll do a new folder, user create. New file, user create.component.ts and a new file, user create.component.html. Let's start with the component. Now we can use our snippet, ng2component. Since we are creating a user, let's go ahead and go to user edit. We'll just copy these import lines here. We'll need the user and the user service. Our user create component will have a user, which is of the class user. And our constructor will bring in that private service is user service. And on init, nothing needs to happen here since we're not going to grab a current user, we're creating a brand new user from scratch. We'll work on this more in just a second. Let's go over to our user create component and we'll copy everything from user edit component and move it into user create. Now this is still valid, ng if user, and we'll go through this line by line, ng submit, we will create a user this time. So that's create user name, form control, ng model is still bound to the user.name and I believe everything will work out just fine for us except for this here, create user. We'll go back to our create component. We still need that success and error message here. We'll do success message is a string and equal to blank. Error message is a string and equal to blank as well. And we will have a way to create a user. Now this is two-way data bound, so we can automatically go this.service.createUser and we already have this.user. And we'll subscribe to that. Let's go take a look at our API and see what returns from the creation. We have create and a user gets returned back with a created at timestamp. Let's go and say user comes back. And here, let's just console log user was created. And for a little bit more of a messaging, let's do success message is equal to user was created. This dot success message is equal to blank. Let's go take a look at our routing real quick and then we'll go look at our app. Here we have users slash create is going to be our user create component. So let's visit that now. Users slash create. 
Notice nothing happens here, and that's because we didn't have anything on ng on init. Our form also doesn't show because a user has not been created just yet. Back in user create component, we have this user here, but it isn't really representative of anything. We just know that that variable exists. Now we could define it here, this.user is equal to, and we could define it there. Another way to do it is just like defining it here, we'll just do user is equal to, name is going to be blank, username is going to be blank, and avatar will also be blank. Now notice we're going to get an error here. Property ID is missing in type user. Now this is TypeScript's way of telling us that this user class requires an ID. Let's go look at our model for user. We have an ID, name, username, and avatar. Since we are creating a brand new user, that ID is not known to us yet. We can't just make up a random number because we might conflict with the database. What's best is if we tell TypeScript that this actually ID, this is optional. And the way we can do that is a question mark right after ID. We'll go back into user create component and notice our error no longer exists here. Go back into our application and now since we have a blank user for blank and blank, our information and our form will show. That takes care of the three steps of adding it to app module adding this create component to our routing, and then also creating the create component. The last step here is we need to add it to the service. Let's go into our user service. Create a user. And we'll follow along with that API, create user, which we pass in a user of type user, returns observable with a user inside of it, return this.http and when we're doing a creation we're going to use post this.users URL users and let's double check that URL for the post create we're going to make a post request to API slash users and that's how we do it we pass in the user as the payload dot map res is equal to res.json. Let's go take a look if there's a dot data object in there. There is not. And catch this dot handle error. All right, let's see if everything's wired together correctly. We'll go enter in some brand new information, create a user, and notice we're going to get an error here. We have unexpected token and our URL for our API is wrong there. We're going API slash users slash users. And that was my fault. Up here in the user service, we already have users URL, which ends in slash users. So there's no point in doing slash users here again. There's actually no point in using a template string. We can just use that string directly. Give that a shot. Random information, random information, create user and we have user was created. Now that works perfectly, but usually when I create a user, I'd like to maybe return back to the users list instead of just seeing that user I just created. You could also return the user to that user profile page, but since our API doesn't allow for that right now, since our API doesn't allow anything to be stored, everything that goes into this API is fleeting, we will just return our user to the users list. To do that, we'll use the Angular router. Go back into user create component at the very top. Let's import from the Angular router, router. In our constructor, let's use that. We'll do private router is router. And then on a successful creation, we're going to route this user, this.router.navigate and we'll pass in the array slash users. Let's add a comment here, navigate back to the users page. And let's move that a little higher. Align those two, and we are in business. Let's give that a shot again. We're in the users, 
And one thing I'm noticing is we need a create user button to actually find that URL. We wouldn't want our users to type that in every single time. Let's go to the user list component. And we want the user list component HTML. Underneath this h1 of users, we'll add an a tag router link is equal to slash users slash create. Let's do class button small and button info. Let's give that a shot. We can create a user, go to that user's page, and get redirected back to the users. Now, if this was a real API and it actually saved information to our database, we would be able to see that new user in this list. Now, the one thing that happened when we started routing the user over to this user's route, we lost that success message. We don't really have a way to show information in this user's list component or this user's component if an event happened down in that user create component. Let's work on deleting users, and then once we get past that, we're going to work on a way that we can have this overall parent component communicate with its child component, the user create component. That way we can show an error message or a success message on this user's page. 